You can find Chapter 4 on our blog via our website www.oflopinfiddlesticks.uk. We'll be working on the bobble stitch using two different colourways. If this is difficult for you, there is an alternative that is written into our blog. So this is row 37 of the bobble and DC stitch. So that would be single crochet for America or USA and um, double crochet for the UK. So we're going to start in the corner of our on the wrong side of our blanket we're going to start in the corner with one DC and three chains and one DC into the corner okay and then we're going to work sorry let me just get myself into position five DC into our blanket so into each stitch so one two three four five right I'm not going to finish that stitch there I'm going to grab hold of my white hold on a second I have everything neatly pegged in and this is what I'm going to do so before I continue this stitch these are some techniques that will help you along the way. Now, first of all, I'm not going to make this tail really short. I'm going to keep it a nice length. Um, so I'm going to drop my mauve or frost blue and I'm just going to reposition it in my fingers and I'm going to just kind of anchor it a little bit so it doesn't become too loose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now this is going to be fiddly for some, okay? But this is what you can get used to doing, it'll be fine. Finish off the stitch that way and then just pull tight on my double crochet. But this is what's important now. I am now going to work both the tail, which has come up, so I'm going to make sure that's got enough tail. I'm going to make sure the tail is directly over the stitch head. So let me just get myself aligned here. Can you see the two pieces of wool that I have there? They're going to sit above my stitches and I'm going to work around them. So now I'm going to pick up my yarn, I'm going to go into the next stitch, making sure that those stitches there, look, those two pieces of wool are that side, and then I'm going to work around them. And now I've worked around them, I can let go for a minute. And that will help anchor. So what I've done there, you probably didn't see, <laughs> I'm going to do it again, yarn over, as if I'm doing a treble, go through, and you can get, you can see that I'm anchoring, with those two pieces of mauve and white, the tail and the existing wall that I want to work back in in a minute, between my finger and thumb where I'm anchoring. So I've left the space open that I'm working into, but where I'm anchoring is anchoring those pieces of wall so they can't move. Okay, so I can keep that nice and steady. And then when I finish that bobble stitch, I can pull my mauve or my frost blue a little bit tighter just to make sure that that isn't too loose. So yarn over take my wool through and act as if I am making, whoop, hang on, I've already done that, act as if I'm already making, hold on, I've got something happening here, right, confused myself there, what I have is three stitches, so I'm going to ignore this one here, because that's not in part of this, this method here, and just go through the first two loops, as if I'm starting a treble but not finishing, now I have my loop that I had originally had on there, I have the loop that I made previously and this loop and I need five of these all together so let's do that again yarn over go through and just the first two loops and we need to do it again because we want five loops all in all so there should be one two three four five loops now before we take the yarn through now if we were doing this one color we would just stick to this you know this color and just pull all the way through but we're not so change your wool and just pull it a little bit tight so you can just make sure that that is where it needs to be. Realign your wool and pull all the way through. And then just a quick chain on the top just to secure the stitch. Then, like we did before, we make sure that the tail and the wool that we're going to be working on, it's just been pulled a little bit, but it's again being anchored between our thumb and our finger and where we're going to work next. So double crochet in or single crochet and pull through 
and then you just do that over the next four stitches and then we will do the same technique that we did on the fifth stitch okay right now before we move on we just need to check that this is nice and neat in here because if once we make this here that will be all that if that's bubble do we can't correct it so we need to correct it now so just again realign your wall make sure it's nice and neat and work our fifth stitch so not your tail we're just doing this for to make sure it's nice and neat hang on i haven't worked around my so again you can see that it can become when you're doing something out of the ordinary which i am because i'm doing it on video i'm not just doing it sitting on my sofa watching netflix make sure you go around that wall and then you can pick up the white making sure that's anchored between so again realign yourself make sure see now you can see that's opened that stitch up too much so we need to pull it down get yourself comfortable so i'm just going to move my blanket a little bit because it's quite a heavy blanket now make sure that that wall's there and pull through okay and then just pull down a little bit so i've pulled the move down a little bit just to close the stitch down so i'm pulling it so if that'll be your frost blue to you yarn over and quickly go through that stitch and then we can then just adjust it again and we do that five times so yarn over go through that same stitch place we're not going along it's all working into the same stitch through the first two loops do the same again first through two loops one two three four five okay swap your wool out swap your wool so it's the move or the frost blue working from the front realign your wool make sure it's comfortable in your hands pull on those pieces of white just to make sure they're nice and tight make sure you're anchored safely and then pull all the way through chain at the top and then just pull your white down a little bit so not too tight you can see that it closes it down just a little bit again make sure they're worked along the top and then do your next double crochet and that will anchor everything in work around those um pieces of wool that are sitting on the top of your wool one two three four before you do the next bit just make sure they're all nicely pulled through so you don't get any bumpy bits okay you just pull them through once you get used to holding them for a bit it will get easier do your fifth stitch find your working yarn because we don't want to be using the tail realign your wool so that you're working with your wool working through your fingers and that we're ready to do the next bubble. Yarn over, readjusting those wool pieces of wool so they're working nice and neatly through. Yarn over, go through the first two. Yarn over, go through the first two. Do that again. And you should have five loops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, before again, we're going to do the same technique of bringing them over to the front and just pulling through now you can see as I pull through and because I've let go of the white it just loosens it up so again they're like your little belt loop pull them a little bit and it will tighten up so before moving on let's just check ourselves so let's just make sure everything is secure pulling it through a little bit more more double crochets so four more double crochets again you can see every now and then I just have a little bit of a tug on my whites just to make sure it's nice and neat I make sure my wall is pull, pulled so I've got enough to work with so nothing is inhibiting my tension my pull anything and it just I do I love bubbles I love the way they look but they can be tedious and you may want to practice this as well on a um, separate piece I've gone all the way through a separate piece of um, granny square or um, a sampler piece just so you can get your head around bobbles before you move on to the next stage so again a little bit of a tug it just neatens it up you can see that it's coming through the um, the double crochets there but eventually that will hide itself so it's not an issue um, but you can see how I just give it a bit of a tug just to tighten it and the same with the mauve so if I want to go back and just give that a bit of a tug on that one 
you can and then work back in. Again, always realigning your wool in your fingers if you need to. If it feels uncomfortable in your fingers, it's going to look uncomfortable on your blanket. Okay, so pick up the wool and just go through. And then just give everything a little bit of a tug. Now, if you want to, you can ignore your tail. Now, this part here that's kind of getting in my way. Um, and ignore it and just not worry about it. And only worry about the mauve and the... Um, so that's not a problem. And then just start your next double crochet, uh, your next bobble. So pull through and just, that's it. Two. Sorry, I have a busy household. <laughs> if you can hear everybody getting up in the morning, I'm trying to do things when it's quiet and everybody's talking now. So, um, go and that's one two three four five oh have I done more than I should have done I have I got overexcited that's it five loops so let me just pull that and pull all the way through chain and then again if your bubble's loose you can just tug down on your white a little bit and then that's fine. And then you just do one, two, three, four. Check the front. Does it need a little bit of a tug? Well, let's just give it one anyway. And then we can do our fifth stitch and then work our white through like so. And it does get easier, like I say, it does get easier. And that are your bubbles. So the bubbles will really come into effect when you take on your second row. So I'm just going to cut this out of the way because it's going to drive me nuts. So as you go along, um, they will get easier and they will get neater as well because you'll find your flow. So this is why probably it's a good idea that you do do a sampler piece, that you can work some bubbles into it just so you can get your head around it, just so you can get your fingers and your hook into place because it does take a little time to warm your hands up. So if you are struggling with your blanket and you're finding that your first few stitches or your first row on that chapter is a little bit messy or a little bit loose or a little bit, you know, you're just not happy, make a sampler piece with some scrap walls. Test out your those stitches if you're feeling unfamiliar because you don't want to work into your blanket and then loosen up stitches or um, have to frog it back and kind of ruin your wool a little bit because it can kind of change the way that your wool feels from the original feeling when you first used it. So if you do that, that way you are allowing your hands to become more comfortable. Your brain is then ex accepting the stitches that you're going to do and knows what to do because it has muscle memory. And that way you're working in a much more comfortable zone. So set time aside. If you find it difficult, set time aside for yourself to do those chapters because it will make a huge difference to how things work. So if you are struggling, if you are thinking it's not as good as everybody else's, because I know some of you are, um, don't worry. That's fine. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's. It's your blanket. So it's entirely up to you how you work. But if you want it to be better, do yourself a kindness. Do yourself a favour. Give yourself the time that you deserve to make this blanket. So find those 10 minutes, do a sampler piece and go, right, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it. Stop making yourself frightened of what is actually something that's quite simple. And I know you can do. I know you can do this. This is tricky. It is things and thumbs. So if you're finding that a little bit difficult, you don't have to put the bubbles in. If you don't want to put the bubbles in, don't put them in. If you're finding it difficult, it's fine. The blanket will live without them. If you've got to this point already, it doesn't necessarily need them. So if you don't want to put them in, don't put them in. Just do this as a half treble, um, you know, stitch. You know, if you want to just put in um, a white stripe, just have it as a white stripe. Um, it's not a problem. This is your blanket. Make it as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. Um, so you can, you know, modify it to work for you. It's your blanket, like I say. 
So if you are finding this a little bit difficult, don't worry. You can either do all the bobbles together in one colour, if that's easier, or don't do the bobbles at all, just do it as a white stripe. That'll give it some definition. Either way, it's going to work for you. You don't have to make, be pulling your hair out and doing it the same as everybody else. In fact, I like it when I see things slightly different. So that's okay. And I've given you permission, so it's fine. Right, that is the bubble stitch. Let's leave it there. We'll come back to the other videos that need to be done um, for the blog and the pattern. And um, let me just check where we're at. Hang on a second. I'm having a, I've written everything out. just need to. So the rows after this row are four rows of half treble in the mauve or the um, frost blue. After that, we have a moss stitch. So we'll come back to the moss stitch just to make sure the placement and we'll work back in the granny square um, row um, together on the moss stitch. So hopefully we should be sailing along so that the next chapter will be our cupcake chapter. So this is quite an easy row. So don't, don't panic yourself. I don't want you to feel that you should be at a certain level and that it should look a certain way and it should be this. I am giving you the green card to be easy on yourself. In fact, I am begging you to be easy on yourself so <laughs> I'm all about kindness this week be kind to yourself you deserve to be kind to yourself she shouldn't you shouldn't he or she or they whichever pronoun you wish to be you shouldn't be hard on yourself when it comes to making a make this should be an enjoyable enjoyable experience so let's try and find a way to make sure and ensure that it is so right anyway before I ramble on because I've had coffee can you tell um and I'll speak to you soon